Hi there, I'm Randy Patterson, a psychologist in clinical practice, and this is Psychology Salon, a channel about psychological issues. If you like this kind of thing, click subscribe. I've posted a variety of videos on various topics on this channel, and most of them will only apply to a subset of viewers. If you've never had a panic attack, then my content on panic probably isn't very relevant to you. If you haven't been depressed and don't know anyone who is, then those videos probably aren't going to engage you. And then there's grief. One of the consequences of being a member of a social species is that loss is inevitable. We form bonds with other human beings, and unless we all wink out at the same moment, we're going to lose at least some of those people and feel the consequences. And eventually, some of them will lose us, and they'll feel the consequences. So grief is universal. You may or may not experience a lot of things, but you probably will experience grief. And probably most people watching this video already have. Our culture is not so good with death. We spend much of our time denying that it even happens. In a lot of places, closed casket funerals are the norm. We don't want to see the dead. Often, there isn't even a casket. There might be a photograph of the person smiling at us, clearly alive. And many of us get very little modeling about how to talk about death. We catch ourselves giving get well soon cards to people who clearly are not going to get well soon. And we say, I'm sorry for your loss when someone has lost a person close to them, but after that, we may feel reluctant to bring up the subject. And the person who is grieving may feel that they're not supposed to bring it up either. The loss may be the biggest component of their life at the moment, but it's somehow embarrassing or rude to talk about it. So we engage in a kind of collective denial that death even exists. There's an empty seat at the table, but we pretend it isn't there. That does not stop death from being a big part of our lives, though. It just means that it's something we don't always know how to think about, or what to do about, or what's normal. I do talks for prospective therapists at some training programs in Vancouver, where I live, and sometimes the topic of grief or grief counseling comes up. And when it does, I say that every therapist, everyone, in mental health needs to have some familiarity with this area because it's the universal human experience. You may or may not ever see a person with trichotillomania, hair pulling, but you will see multiple people dealing with loss. You need to be equipped for it. And one of the reasons for that is precisely what I've been saying. It's not something that gets talked about outside therapy. These trainees sometimes think, what's the point? I can't bring back the dead, and it's not my job to shut down grieving. It's a natural process. It happens. And they're right. It does happen. But I think there are two main reasons why clinicians need to have some comfort with this area. First, grief can be about the most painful experience a person goes through. And if you're going through pain, it helps not to go through it alone. It helps if you have someone outside yourself, a supporter, to listen and to be present. Someone who can hear the stories and the thoughts and the emotions. You don't have to stop them. Just being present can help. Second, that conspiracy of silence we have about death can mean that people don't know what to expect. It's like they've been parachuted into a darkened maze with no flashlight. You're supposed to find your way through somehow, but there are no signs, and it's not entirely clear what through even means. It's easy to develop fears that somehow you're not doing it right, or that some of what you're experiencing means that what you feared is happening. You really are going mad with it. This isn't what's supposed to happen, and you're actually breaking apart. 
an experienced therapist or a friend who's been through it, or who knows, maybe even a video, can be like a guide with a flashlight. They can say, oh yeah, that looks awful, but it's actually part of the furniture. And that dog looks ferocious, but that dog doesn't bite. In my experience, people going through grief often, I'm tempted to say usually, are going through two problems. One is the grief, and the other is the conviction that they're doing it wrong, or that they're going crazy, or that this experience has exposed their true inadequacy, why they're not good enough, and certainly not up to handling this. We cannot take away the pain. We can help with some of the confusion and self-doubt. Grief work is a big area, and I'm certainly not going to cover it in a few brief YouTube videos, but I will talk about some aspects of the phenomenon, and I won't be exhaustive. YouTube is not the place to come for everything you need. And because everyone is an individual, and every loss is, to some extent, unique, there will always be some particulars that don't get talked about in any general presentation. I should mention a bit about my perspective. I've had a great admiration for the work of John Bowlby, really the pioneer of the field of attachment theory, a set of ideas about the relationships between people, the functions they serve, the ways that they form, and the things that happen when they're threatened. With Dr. Greg Moran, I published a review article on attachment theory way back in the 1980s in Clinical Psychology Review. With regard to grief counseling, my go-to book has always been William Warden's excellent book, Grief Counseling and Grief Therapy, published over 40 years ago now. And really, I haven't seen anything that surpasses it. If you're a clinician, I really recommend this book. And if, like most people who watch these videos, you're not a clinician, maybe you're somebody experiencing grief yourself. Is there a book or resource I can recommend? Well, there's a lot of books out there, and I wish I had a particular one to recommend to you. As it happens, I don't. But if you found a book that's helped you cope with loss, maybe you could mention that in the comments section. Much of my discussion in coming videos is going to cover what William Warden calls the four tasks of grief. It's tempting to think of these as stages, but stage theories in psychology are always a bit mythological. We don't do one thing, then flip over and do a completely new one and progress from one to the next in order the way we might in school. Grade one, grade two, grade three. Grief is a bit messier than this. There is a kind of order of things, and that's the order I'll post in. But it's best not to take the order too seriously. So what are those tasks? Reality, experience, adjustment, reinvestment. And when I get to the end, I will absolutely not have covered everything. That's the nature of video. But hopefully, I will have said something that someone finds illuminating or useful. We'll see. There are other videos on this channel on the psychology of everyday life. Click the subscribe button for more. I also have an online course site psychologysalon.teachable.com with programs for professionals and for the general public. And my guide, The Assertiveness Workbook, is available from bookstores and online booksellers. Thanks for watching.